Antarctica has just had its hottest day ever recorded. The temperature rose to 18.3 degrees Celsius. That was at an Argentine research base. It's on the Antarctic Peninsula, jutting up towards South America, and that part of the continent has warmed much faster than the global average over the past 50 years, causing glaciers to shrink by 87%. The scientists fear global warming will eventually disintegrate the ice sheet across the entire South Pole, and that will cause sea levels worldwide to rise by at least three metres. Well, Andrew Shepherds is a professor of Earth Observation at the University of Leeds. He researches the changes in the Antarctic and its impact on the environment. He joins us now on Skype from Leeds. Good to have you with us uh, here on Al Jazeera. Uh, first of all, just how alarming is this development? Oh, it's really important. Um, this temperature record from the Argentine base has been really powerful for us. It's allowed us to say whether the changes that are happening in Antarctica in this part of the continent are um, short-term fluctuations or a long-term trend, and it's definitely the latter. Um, but they also, very much like the Canadian fires at the moment, give us a glimpse into the future and how different parts of the world will be in just a few decades' time. And are we just talking a matter of, of, of years, a matter of decades now? I mean, or, or do you think this is, this is reversible in some way? So uh, we've learned a lot about how ice responds to changes in climate just because of this particular part of the planet. Um, at the northern tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, there are a series of ice shelves and they're really floating extensions of glaciers into the sea. And they've broken away over the past two or three decades. And um, we didn't think that that was possible um, until it started to happen. And that's an irreversible process. They won't grow back again for a thousand years. Um, and this is the first time it's happened in, in, in 10,000 years. So this is definitely a signal of dramatic change um, happening in our lifetimes. Uh, just talk us through the significance of this particular region in the Antarctic. Why, why is this region such a focus of, of, of research and development? Well, it's, it's definitely the most easily accessible. So this, this part of Antarctica is at a similar latitude to Iceland in the northern hemisphere, and that's why it gets warm in summer. Um, but just three or four decades ago, it was a cold place, um, and, and it had lots of ice, and now that ice has, has gone, and, and, and the, the ice is retreating farther south in Antarctica. But we've learned how really glaciers respond to ocean and atmospheric warming because of what's happened here. And we can use that information to uh, improve our predictions of what's going to happen farther south where there's a lot more ice. And in terms of these predictions, like certainly we're, we're, you, you say these are melting faster than was anticipated. Uh, we've heard from the, the various COP summits that, that the average temperature rise is, is escalating. It's going faster and faster and faster. Is this, in your opinion, is this running out of control or is there still time to try and rein in this process of climate change? So there's always time to, to reduce the effects um, that, that might happen in the future under a very hot planet. Um, we can do things uh, to reverse what's happening today um, in some instances, but it's, it's not realistic to expect our planet to cool. Even if we all reduce our emissions to net zero as people hope will happen in, in, in two or three decades' time. Um, that's not going to cool the planet again, and so we're already committed to some sea level rise. And that's where we also need governments and people to be prepared for what, what's going to be happening in coastal parts of many countries by the end of this century. People will experience flooding more frequently than they do today. OK, Andrew Shepherd, great to get your thoughts and your analysis. Thank you so much for speaking to us here at Al Jazeera. Thank you.